Welcome back to another Alberta Reading Comp video. So the first step I take when doing these is I scan for the reasonable answers and then I look for um, the, the context and see if it matches. So I went through my process more in depth in my video of Alberta English Reading Comprehension Part B.1. So you should really check that out because otherwise you're going to miss out on the exact process of doing this and might be misled. Okay, but first, I'm going to jump straight into the questions. Let's juxtaposition of a natural word. Okay, first, just seeing how many keywords there are in this question means it's giving me a lot of clues to help me find the right answer. So the right answer is going to be something that has a juxtaposition, so kind of a kind of like contrast put together. And there's the right answer is going to contain pictures of the natural world and the, the human world. Okay, human world and natural world, and both of them will be in the right answer. Let's see. Sometimes I like to start from D and work up to A. White-tailed deer lying in the clover under skeletal hydro towers. Okay, we got nature and we got human. You got towers. It's D. And I, I'll just show you why it is in the others. But um, don't look for the wrong answer. Look for the right answer. White-tailed deer come down the river and graze, unconcerned at our present. Nature, a little bit of humans, but it's... It doesn't specifically emphasize a world of human beings. If you want juxtaposition, you might get like machines plus animals. That's because humans are animals, so you want more juxtaposition. So I think D is more strong. Currents cast our lines. You're fishing, yes. But here's the thing. With all these things, they say that you got some animals here, and then you get a presence of a human here. But the thing is, the world of human beings doesn't just say juxtaposition between natural world and humans. Humans are the natural world too. We're animals too. So the, the biggest contrast here is you got something that is natural and alive and, and, and something not alive. So that's juxtaposition, life and not alive. Juxtaposition of alive and not alive and natural world, animals and the world of human beings, human built towers. So there you got it. Inner workings, sewage. There's This is definitely that. But inner workings, where's the natural world, right? Let's just see. I'll show you. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. This is five. The disc won't drive a boot. Inner workings of a sewage. So this inner workings is actually about the sewage. So that is not the natural world. After rescanning all of these answers, I think D is the strongest. Remember to, after you do this kind of check between all your answers you want to check it again just to make sure you're not leaving out anything important now next question in lines contrasts the way that human na that nature functions with the way that human beings behave in order to illustrate so contrast whenever you have a some piece of literature the contrast will always 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 be the central conflict and the theme, the main idea. So then, by contrasting nature and humans, it's portraying the main idea of a poem. Now, what might be the main idea? What might be the purpose that they that they want to contrast between nature and human? Now, just just not reading this, just not reading that. They might contrast nature and human, probably because maybe we're way out of date. We're not focusing on what's most important and all of that stuff. So now let's check the answers. Malice, self-pity, arrogance, malevolence. It, it definitely has something of a negative connotation if you want to contrast nature and humans. It's probably criticizing humans. Now let's check line 21 to 22. So you see what I did here was I scanned for reasonable answers and then I checked the context. 21, 22. Oh, I wish I had that here. Let me just check. I got it printed here. Okay, this is 21, 22. The simple rise and setting of the sun confound our pretensions. Confound means confuse. The way we still dial a touch tone phone confide our secrets. So you see, just, just from these two lines, they don't say much. So what you want to do is read the entire context so you get what tone 
this line is implying. More readily to posters and lovers, how we speak in any voice other than our own. So we got pretension here. Pretension, maybe we're too pretentious, more than nature. Okay. So now, this is all, all these answers are so similar. So what you want to do is, what might I find if something were malice, arrogant, and malevolent? That's okay. We know arrogant, that means you're prideful and selfish, focused on yourself and not on others. Malevolence and malice, whew, super close, hey? Um, both of these, I would say, have the idea of being evil and um, willing to hurt others. To be quite honest, other than this definition, I can't define between A and D other, other than this. So, um, I, by the way, I'm not looking at self-pity because uh, it's just, it, it's not negative. It's not that negative. And other things that I'm sure you can tell. Okay, so pretensions, confide, um, dial a phone, speak in any voice other than our own, fish we counted on, fish we counted on, not just the fish we count, like five fish, but the fish that we trusted slip and glide away. Now, I know that the answer is still not clear, but here's the other thing that I'm gonna go with this. Because malice and malevolence is so similar, and especially we don't have a dictionary right in front of us, if A and D are so similar, and we had to pick between A and D, there's a good chance that A and D is not the right answer because they're just so similar. How can you discern between them? And then we don't have a dictionary after all. So maybe they're both a wrong answer because if you have one wrong answers idea and then you just get another word that replicates a wrong answer and that's a good way to confuse students. The right answer is C in this case. If you have any uh, specific ideas on why that might be C, perhaps pretending is kind of selfish, please drop a comment. In the context of the entire poem, Whenever it says the context, you have to, have to, have to read the context. If a question says context, then your answer is going to involve a lot about context. So you need to read the context to understand the tone of the answers. A description of the windpipes that are throbbing and singing the only tune they know most likely metaphorically refers to. Okay. This one I've done, it's awful, but let's see. Context of the entire poem. This is the part where you need to start reading the entire poem. I've already read it before I started this video, many times actually. One, two, three. Okay, kind of here. On the far shore, throbbing windpipes unnumbered as leaves on the trees sing the only tune they know to the waning light. Let's just say if I read the entire poem and I still don't understand what's going on and I'm just going to go with this little context and all this part. Actually, in this specific context, I this part is kind of confusing. But nevertheless, in this little bit, does give us a very important hint. Okay. Nature whose rule is survival of the fittest. Windpipes are not so much about nature because it's man-made. So we're gonna look at B. We're not gonna eliminate A because it's awful to eliminate the right answer. Um, so we're gonna just put that to the back and see if there are other right answers, okay? No elimination. The elite whose money has corrupted idealism. I'm sorry, but there is no mention of money here. We know we have towers, but Wind pipes, that is cheap. There is no money and corruption. Okay. Now these two might seem really close. Politicians whose only desire is to secure power. Now if you have someone that wants to secure power, 
um, well, it's, it's kind of vague. So we'll just look at D. The masses whose ignorance robs them of their power. You read that? You're saying what is going on, right? Now, um, if I were to just take out the main idea of C and D. Mass. So, okay, mass, that means a lot of people. A lot of people. Politicians are people with power. So we might find something like prestige and hierarchy. Desires to secure power. So we will find greed. Ignorance robs them of their power. That would be um, oblivion. You, you have more information out there, but you don't know what's going on. So the main idea here will be ignorance. So if something's ignorant, you can't understand the truth. Okay, so let's see what there is here. If it's C, we will find prestige, hierarchy, and greed. If it's D, we'll find a lot and ignorance. On the far shore, throbbing wind pipes, unnumbered as leaves on a tree. There's no hierarchy, there is no greed, because you got trees, you can't be greedy about leaves, right? But it does said unnumbered. So the closest thing with using the minimal clues that we do have, it's gonna be D. I know it's hard to find ignorance in here. Well, actually you can. Towers in the field of clover, where there is a deer. So you kind of imply that, you kind of get that. Omenless, so maybe, okay, here we go. Red sky, it's always omened. If you have a sky that is red, it definitely something's going on. And if it's omenless, then you're probably not understanding. The closest thing is D, because it says unnumbered. And the right answer is D. It's, it's a weird question. The emphasis achieved by titling the poem at a nameless bend in the river. So it's going to be about the title and emphasis. So whatever the right answer is, it's going to be emphasizing something. Reinforces the theme that humanity. So we're looking for the theme. That humanity is at a turning point. So then that kind of means that our right answer will be something that is important because it's emphasizing something that the theme, whatever answer we have here, I'm not looking here, whatever right answer is, it's going to be emphasized of something. It's going to emphasize, it's important. It's not just a random statement, it's, it's important. And it's going to mention something about turning points or change, okay? Turning point, maybe choices, change, etc. And that will be your right answer. Whatever that, whatever right answer that has turning point, emphasis, etc. So, so seriously, reading comps, the question gives you the answer. Separated from the natural world, depleted by the rapid pace of daily life. That's a lot of words, so we'll just pull out the main idea of each answer. Separated, pace, frustrated, complex in technology. apprehensive globalization okay turning point now just scan all the words that I highlighted or just just scan all the keywords key ideas and then think which one has more turning point to it which one has more change and transformation to it and if that doesn't click. Let's see which one has something that, which one has a theme in it. Okay, after after you've done that, from what I got, it's probably going to be A or B. Because the theme is something that's general and universally important. Universal life lessons, that's what a theme is. And now let's see, what, what, nameless bend in the river, maybe that might give us some clue. This is a title after all, and the title might suggest a theme. Nameless bend in the river, so that means a river is nameless, it's unimportant. It does not say a rapid pace of daily life, it talks about the nature, and the right answer is A, 
because as you see, there's a river and it doesn't have a name. So it's likely we have been separated and find the river unimportant. That means we are isolated from the natural world. We don't care that much about it. It's going to be A. Now, rapid pace and depletion. We are, well, this might seem like this, but this does not click, all right? So the big point, the big lesson that we can learn, there are a lot, so there are a lot of lessons you can learn, but one of the big things we found from these is that questions gives answers, especially in reading comps, questions. And what I mean by question give you answers is their word choice, what words they use. And I hope this video was helpful for you.